this year, I lost my grandfather in January, my birth mother very unexpectedly in February, my grandmother in March, a cousin who I didn't know very well but was trying to reconnect with me in August, and my birth mother's youngest sister, again very unexpectedly in September. I was also diagnosed officially with depression and ADHD and Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease. Needless to say, I have not cared about much of anybody's anything this year, let alone take care of my dream business that I worked so hard to build over the last two years. But had this ridiculous year not happened, I don't know that I would have ever taken the time to reflect on some past decisions that I thought were failures, and I'm beginning to see were the actual keys to the doors and the pathways of opportunities that I never would have imagined existed. You see, my background is that I have been a professional singer for over 20 years. And along with that dream of being a singer, I have always wanted and had dreamed up having a production and coaching company. That's what I wrote down in my business plan in 2005. But the problem was that I didn't know how to get the $250,000 it was going to take to build said production company. And so I did what I knew how to do. I knew how to coach. So I coached singers and speakers, and I continued to sing. And years passed, and eventually I came upon an opportunity to learn how to get that $250,000. But you see, when I learned how to do it, it freaked me out. Because in my mind, I couldn't imagine that anyone would invest in me that amount of money. And the only way that I could see that happening was to have 250,000 individual people invest a dollar each in my business. And I would have to be beholden to all of those people and so, I didn't do what I had learned how to do. And I kept on going, trying to figure things out, trying to get this business of mine off of the ground, spending lots of money getting coaching and business training and trying to make things happen. Until finally one day, I saw a friend of mine who I'd only known from online, and she was a fellow singer, like me. And she was a voice coach, like me. But I saw on her social media feeds that suddenly things were looking a little different. And I said, Molly, what's going on over there? Things are very, very different than what you've been doing in the past, and I think as much as you've helped me over the years, I think I need to pay you now because I need somebody to musician explain this business stuff to me. And Molly took me on as her client. And Molly was very, very good at social media. And at the time, Facebook Live was a thing. And so she got me in front of that camera you should know she got me there kicking and screaming because contrary to popular belief, I did not want to speak more than three words that didn't involve a song. 
And I got on that Facebook Live every day. And I worked to learn how to be online, even though it scared me. Fast forward to 2020. It was February. We just handed out invitations to our child's fifth birthday party. Now, this was a good birthday party. You know the one where your child actually has their friends coming to the party, not the ones that are just mommy and daddy's friends? It was that one. And the possibility existed that schools were going to be shutting down. And I said to my husband, what are we going to do? He said, I don't know. I said, well, what if, what if we did his party online? He said, that's weird. Now, my husband has been with me for a while, and so he's used to my crazy entrepreneurial ideas. And he walked away. But I was a percolate. And I thought, I think I can make this happen for my child online. And I realized that my child wasn't the only one that was going to need a real birthday party with real friends and fun things and activities happening and not that drive-by. You remember those? Can you imagine telling a four-year-old, hey, you're going to have a birthday party. Your friends are coming. Here they come. Just kidding. Bye. I couldn't do that to my son. So I figured out how to make his party work online. And not only did we do it for him, but we did it for so many other little children across the nation and around the world. And I could see that not only did kids need this, but businesses needed it too. They needed to know how they could make their online meetings and events be something more than a boring sit-down call. And we began to work with companies and our business was going. And I understood that had I decided to get that $250,000, I would have never reached out to Molly. And had I not reached out to Molly, I would have never been forced to be online in 2015. And had I not been forced to be online in 2015, I would have never, ever seen that door in 2020. This year has caused me to reflect on so many things. I've also thought about another decision I made. Not long after my son was born, I had the opportunity to be on a televised talent show. And I had worked so hard to get to that show. I tried four times, and on the fifth time, I finally made it to that stage. And they asked me about my life and my past, and they asked me about my birth mother. And they wanted her story. But I wasn't willing to give it. I told them as much as I could but I didn't want to tell them anymore because my mom had been a drug addict and she had suffered many afflictions. But I didn't know what having all of these flashing lights and cameras would do to her. Would it send her reeling back? And so I said, no, I'm not going to give you that story. And that meant that I wasn't on that show. 
it felt like I had failed so hard after working so long. Nobody knew that I was there. My birth mother didn't even know that I was there. Months later, I finally did talk with her about it. And I just casually mentioned that I had had this opportunity to be on this television show. And I didn't go any further because they wanted to know more about her. And to be quite honest, I didn't know the whole story. And we talked about when I found out that she had had the drug addiction. And she said, do you know when I told you about being a drug addict? And I said, no, I, I think it was that time that I visited you when I was in college and we went to Seattle and, um, and you were in the hospital yet again and uh, they told me that you were there because you were a drug addict. And she said, no, I told you when you were eight years old. And I said, what? I don't remember that. She said, yeah, I was in the psych ward. And they told me as a part of my treatment that I had to tell you what was going on. And so they put me on the phone and they gave me seven minutes. And do you know what you said to me, Ella, when I told you that I was a drug addict? I said, no, I, I, I really don't remember. She said, Ella, you told me. That's all right, Mommy. I love you anyway. And the minute she said that, the memories came flooding back. I could see it. I could see the phone cord. I could see me sitting on the floor. And she told me that seven minutes turned into 14 because we were laughing so much that they didn't bear to take her off the phone with me. And she told me then, I knew that all of these years you've been holding back because of me. But I want you to know, baby girl, that you can tell everybody my story. Do you know that people died doing what I did? I'm alive today because of you. Tell them all. If I had never said no to tell that show, my mom's story, I would have never asked her those questions. I would have never had the days of phone calls that I have with her to find out more and more about this woman that my father always told me that I was just like. And I would have never had her hear her only grandchild speak to her every morning before school. I mentioned that I was also diagnosed with Hashimoto's. And for the last two years, I haven't sung. Most people thought it was because I was so focused on my business. But what I was afraid to tell anyone was that my voice was not working. And I did not know why. Going to doctors and laryngologists who looked at my vocal folds and said, they're pristine, they're perfect, you obviously have great technique. Well, then why is it not working? Until I finally reached a doctor that helped me understand what Hashimoto's is. And while I still don't understand everything, I know that inflammation was in my body. And she helped me to bring that down so that my vocal folds could finally move again. And had I not had this year, I wouldn't have taken the time to reflect and find that. I wrote a song 
years ago when I was in one of my darkest spaces. And the words that I wrote were ones that I hoped could be me one day. And I'd like to sing that song for you. Hidden in the shadows, sitting looking out from a darkened window pane. I watch the rain, I take the blame, and I know I haven't seen the sun for days. Thoughts keep spinning in my mind, counting every grain of sand falling in the glass. But the storm is over. Shine a light on me. Shine a light on me Paint my grays in shades of color Show me who I am Shine a light Shine a light on me Keep thinking you're the one who's keeping all the keys to the doors that are locked and take it back. All those things you said, how my heart bled, but the pain is over. Shine a light on me. Shine a light on me Paint my grays in shades of color Show me who I am Shine a light Shine a light No I don't want to be in your shadow anymore And I can't keep running no Sat there at my door, and that war is all Shine a light on me. Paint my grace and shades of color. Show me who I am. Shine a Thank you.